какого пост как dependency management tool при разработке iOS проектов. Ну, эта толза существует уже довольно давно. Она еще не вышла до стадии 1.0 релиза, она еще в стадиях 0.39, 0.40, но уже довольно стабильная, но при этом частенько вводятся некие изменения в саму тулзу, которые как бы меняют характер ее работы. Ну, собственно, но она уже довольно стабильная, уже довольно хорошо себя зарекомендовала на рынке как Dependency Management Tool. Значит, адженда наша будет состоять из четырех как, главных частей. Первое, это я сравню различные техники Dependency Management в iOS, какие более популярные, какие мы, какими мы пользуемся и ну и, собственно, процесс эволюции до какого под, скертич, ну и вот так далее. Далее мы пройдемся по какого под, зайдем глубже, как работает клинковка при сборке проекта через какого под, как, как мы можем, собственно, видеть код, как мы его используем. Ну, то есть немножко посмотрим вглубь. Затем мы... Затронем интересный топик – это использование какого под как тузы для э, шер, шерения, для, ну да, для шер кода в, во внутренних проектах. Ну, например, есть у нас несколько э, у клиентов внутренних проектов, которые мы не выкладываем, ну, не в общем доступе. Нам надо между ними зашарить какую-то общую часть кода для того, чтобы не писать. Э, для того, чтобы делать one-time фиксы, и во всех проектах эти фиксы были видны, ну и, собственно, не, не дублировать код. И напоследок поговорим о том, все-таки это уже касательно э, довольно узкая тема, стоит ли хранить все-таки подзы в репозитории или не стоит. Ну, это уже как бонус. Ну, давайте начнем с э, того, как, того, какие техники существуют в и существовали. So, first technique for dependency management, which were used a lot previously, all of us did this. Uh, dirty work. It's manually drag files, frameworks into the project. It uh, the the uh, the main uh, like the rudest uh, way for sharing uh, some uh, third-party code uh, and adding it to your project. It's um, uh, we all did this. So, <laughs> and after this, uh, the more. Um, intelligent way is dragging an Xcode project of a third-party library uh, into your project. Uh, then we will discuss Git submodules as a tool for dependency management. Next will be the care page, and the last one will be Coco Pods. So many of the drag, drag files looks like this. You just take uh, some files and add it to, to your project. So, as I said, we all did this. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but actually, um, someone can say that this um, um, way can have uh, some process. So, uh, it's like possibility of changing the code of a leap. But for me, it's uh, definitely a cons. So, but. Someone can say that we, in our project, we definitely need some uh, library, we need to change some code in it and use it in our project. So uh, maybe it's, um, uh, we can use this way of uh, adding dependency, but uh, its cons are diff difficulties in keeping a leap up to date, so you always need to manually update your lib, uh, check divs, and so on. And uh, also, it's um, you, you need to set up uh, different uh, settings uh, for compiler for those uh, added files. For example, if they are not uh, compatible with ARC, you need to manually set that obscene ORC flag to each of those files, and so on. 
Uh, the next way of adding the dependency is dragging the actual Xcode project to as a sub project to the to your main project. This uh, uh, possibility was added in Xcode 4, and uh, uh, it's very similar to the previous one, but it has one benefit in comparison to the previous uh, one main benefit. It's that uh, uh, compiler flux uh, are resolved by subprojects. So if a uh, subproject is written using uh, manual reference counting, so you don't need to um, somehow indicate uh, those files that they are manually um, memory reference counted. So the subproject file, Xcode proj uh, will uh, indicate it by its own. The next uh, convenient way of uh, sharing the code between uh, and adding it to your project is adding a git submodule to your main um, JIT of your project. So here you can see that I have added a submodule of uh, messenger project to the main project, and uh, then I uh, on the bottom image you can see that. Uh, the root folder of my project now contains that masonry framework, and I can freely add files from that masonry framework to my project, and uh, they will be visible, and we can use it. They can be used in the main project. Uh, the main benefit is uh, that this uh, way of uh, managing dependency allows us to easily keep a uh, uh, all files of uh, library up to date. So if, if a project is um, actively developed in uh, uh, by community, we will keep this project up to date every time when we update our Git sub modules. And uh, the cons is main cons is that uh, it's very difficult to manage versions of dependencies. For example, if uh, Sub module has uh, um, sub module uh, library has some version. We made uh, archive with that version, and then new version comes uh, along with uh, by communities. So it will be very difficult to manage all the tags and uh, all that stuff. It's possible, but it's um, difficult. They, there's need to, to be done some additional work. So to fix this um, versioning and uh, to make it more easier, uh, community provided us several like main main developer tools which are used nowadays. First of them is CarePage, and second is CocoaPod. So let's look at the Kertage more carefully. Uh, the Kertage, uh, so during my presentation, I won't like show um, higher um, details of each framework. I assume that uh, all of you know how CocoaPods uh, work, or if, even if you don't know, you can read the quick manual on CocoaPods.com. I will show you some interesting details of each of these frameworks. Actually, I will show the setup process, but it will be like very quick slide and so on. So for Kertage, you create a Kertage uh, Kert file, which shows the dependencies of your main project. Here I uh, have shown the dependency for Mantle, and uh, the same as in CocoaPods, but here the file is called Kert file, and CocoaPods has a file which is named uh, pod file. So, Kert file shows us the dependencies of our project, and uh, when we uh, run from the command line setup for Kertage framework, it uh, builds us our dependency uh, libraries into frameworks. So, what is uh, so here you can see that uh, this uh, project uh, has now a Kert file in its root folder and the Kertage folder, which uh, contains all our uh, frameworks for all dependencies. 
And here you can see the target for the main project. And I have included here the framework for mental by my own. So here you can see the structure of the main project uh, hierarchy. So you just uh, add this mental framework or any other framework to the root of your project, and you can use it like um, you uh, add uh, all system frameworks. So what are the benefits and uh, cons of the Kertage? For example, with comparison with CocoaPods. Uh, the main benefit of a Kertage is that it's very flexible and, and uh, unintrusive. So it means that it's very um, simple. It does not um, create, uh, it doesn't do all that magic which CocoaPods do. It doesn't create a, a shared workspace for you. It's just uh, a mediator between JIT and Xcode build tool. So it just downloads all the files for a given um, dependency and builds them into framework. So, and you, in, uh, and as an output of this framework, you receive uh, uh, frameworks which are stored uh, in the root of your project file. And uh, here I listed that uh, it's non-centralized, so there is uh, no central repository right, like CocoaPods has for its specs. So it doesn't have that centralized store for any kind of dependencies. You just list all your um, dependencies and uh, Kertage will download them right from the uh, repository of each dependency. So there is no need in spec stores. There is no need in any other uh, repository except uh, your dependencies repositories. And the cons is are that uh, first one is developer is responsible for integrating frameworks into workspace. Uh, actually, developer can create a script which will uh, add all the dependencies. All developer can do it by by uh, his own, uh, like uh, manually drag and drop dependencies. So uh, Kertage doesn't care how you will do this. It just downloads all dependencies, stores them in a root folder of your project, and that's all. So uh, that's maybe a cons, because you need to uh, uh, think over how to make a uh, possibility for adding those results to your project. And uh, the second cons uh, in comparison to CocoaPods is that project discovery is more difficult. Uh, for CocoaPods, you just open a specs repository and you can uh, uh, read over each uh, spec, read uh, in Google what this spec uh, library does, and you can think uh, whether you need this library in your project or don't. Here in Kertage, you don't have this central store for all uh, supported uh, libraries. You need to maybe read some manuals, ask communities, and so on and so forth for discovering uh, third-party libs. And uh, regarding the CocoaPods, in comparison to um, Kertage CocoaPods, uh, manages all, all the linking of result frameworks and live by its own. It's CocoaPods create all the workspace, set up all the uh, linking for you, so you don't need to care how how that all will be uh, gathered in one uh, working solution. CocoaPods does its own, does it by its own. But uh, there are cons of, of CocoaPods. It's it, it is complexity, so it's a black box with some magic under the hood. You really um, can um, see what it does, but uh, in order to um, understand how it works, you need to spend a lot of time, maybe learn Ruby, maybe, uh, I don't know, decompile something. So. Its, uh, it's uh, workflow is uh, complex. And uh, 
So let's move to the uh, next slide, uh, where I will describe you how actually CocoaPods uh, works uh, under the hood. So uh, as we uh, know, or, or maybe uh, mm, uh, here you can see that uh, each uh, CocoaPod supported project should have uh, its pod file which uh, describes uh, its dependencies. It's well written in all uh, CocoaPods guides on uh, CocoaPods.com, so um, it's very easy to dive into using it, so you just read that manual and everything will work fine, uh, I guarantee it. <laughs> so here you can see some test um, pod file, which shows us the two main targets of our project. Uh, it's CocoaPod test and CocoaPod test tests uh, depend on its own um, uh, dependencies. So first uh, target uses IF networking and second target uses Kiwi uh, for uh, testing in BDD design, BDD style stylish design. So after we create, after I created such uh, pod file and uh, ran uh, pod update command from the uh, root uh, folder of my project. All dependencies were downloaded and integrated in the uh, result workspace. So here you can see that uh, pods generated for me a workspace and the last uh, green line says that uh, from now on X Xcode workspace should be used in order to um, build all the needed dependencies. Uh, so uh, this Xcode workspace looks like this. The first project is our main project, CocoaPod test, and the second project actually is pods generated project, which creates uh, needed static libraries for using by the main project. So. Here I described how, uh, here I expanded all the folders of a pods uh, project and uh, I want to pay your attention on a products folder, group, I mean, products group, which lists the static libraries which are generated by a pods, um, sub pods um, project. So here you can see that uh, four static libraries are generated. And the, the most interesting thing here is uh, their dependencies on each other. So uh, libifnetworking.a and libkiwi.a is actually, are actually uh, libraries which are generated by just uh, compiling of uh, uh, our dependency source files and linking them. And the lib spot cocopods test.a and the second one uh, uh, lib uh, were uh, generated by um, linking of um, uh, result static libs into another lib. So uh, let me explain what does it mean. So here you can see that uh, pods cocopod test target of a pods project contains a dependency of IF networking. Actually, it just duplicates what we saw in the um, pod file. So we said that uh, our main target of our project should be dependent on IF networking. And uh, our test target should be dependent on Kiwi. So uh, if we uh, in the pod file for some target add several dependencies. For example, if we added uh, for a uh, main CocoaPods test project, for example, I have networking and um, mental, for example. So uh, we, we would see that this pods CocoaPods pods test target will be dependent on two sub uh, targets. It, will, it would be dependent on IF networking and on mental. So uh, to say these um, uh, two last targets are like aggregators of uh, previous 
uh, targets which were uh, used for uh, linking and compiling of all uh, code of our dependencies. And uh, here I uh, show, here I have shown the main target of our uh, application Cocopo test. Uh, this target is dependent on uh, lib pods Cocopo test. So that lib which were uh, like aggregator of all our dependencies for main target. And uh, the test target depends on tests, uh, lib pods, cocopod test, tests, static library. Uh, here you can see the small diagram which shows how main and test target of our application depend on uh, pods projects. So it's fairly simple, but uh, uh, that's how CocoaPods uh, integrates all, all the libraries, all the linkage for all our sub-dependencies in our main target. So I think regarding uh, the linkage, that's all. If, uh, By the way, if you have any questions during my presentation, I think you're freely to ask them. But I will... Uh, give you time at the end of presentation for all questions. Uh, the next uh, thing which I wanted to cover is uh, how actually CocoaPods knows uh, where, we, where it should get our dependencies, uh, where, where these um, dependencies are stored and where it should fetch them. So here I shown the uh, when you install CocoaPods on your local machine, you would see that uh, it creates a, a hidden folder in your uh, user's uh, root directory. It um, it's, um, lists all the uh, repositories for specs which are used by the CocoaPods. So the master repository actually corresponds to the a master repository on GitHub, which stores all CocoaPods uh, specs for all third-party projects which are developed by community. But here also I added some private uh, specs repositories which I used for testing and in our project, so on. Uh, here I have shown some test spec for uh, Kiwi framework. Uh, actually, what, what is spec? Spec is like a meta um, uh, file which describes uh, actually the dependency. It shows the current uh, uh, last version for um, framework. It shows where to get uh, files from, so it shows the JIT or SVN uh, repository link. It shows uh, also this uh, spec can uh, show some uh, license of, of this project, auth authors, and so on. So actually, uh, it's very um, flexible, this pod spec file. So you can uh, read carefully what each of these parameters means on an offici in an official guides of CocoaPods. So each framework which is used by CocoaPods has to has to have this pod spec file uh, in uh, some uh, specs repository. The, the next thing which is uh, which I wanted to cover today actually is very um, interesting and uh, in and uh, commonly used uh, in uh, even in our project which we are developing. It's uh, using of private specs for in-house code sharing. So CocoaPods allows us to share a code between your project uh, without uh, sharing that code to the community. So that code will stay private, and uh, but you can uh, use it in your own projects along with the other CocoaPods dependencies. So here I uh, already told you that I have added some private repository with specs. Uh, it's, it's, uh, here you can see that it's a Bitbucket uh, repository. You can create a JIT repository or Bitbucket. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it uh, 
has to be the JIT repository, as I remember. So you just uh, add this repository by CocoaPods um, commands, and uh, you can add your private specs to that uh, that repository, which is private for your needs. Here I have shown the test private spec, which is uh, created by for uh, sharing that common code of my project. Uh, the main thing here is uh, the source location. So I have listed the uh, URL for the source of um, common code which is used in our, which is used in this test project which I created. Uh, also, uh, this private spec used the prefix header file, so you should list it here. Uh, and the, the version is very minor, so it's the first spec which was created. So here you can see uh, the project, the actual test project which I created, and the private specs repository contains all the private specs, and common repository contains actual code for our uh, source files. And uh, uh, here I have listed the pod file for test project, which uses IF networking from the master specs repository and common uh, shared code of my private specs repository. So here how you list it, you just add the source directory and add the name of um, uh, libraries which you want to use in your result project. And after running pod update, you would see that your pod's project contains IF networking and common uh, code which is used by your project. So it's very, very uh, convenient, very easy to add a dependency for all of your uh, in-house projects. By the way, as I know, Facebook uses this technique. They have several projects like Messenger, Facebook main app, and all of the projects shares their uh, common code by this technique. And the last thing which I wanted to cover today is the question to store pods in JIT repository or not to store. So, um, in our project, we decided that we won't store the dependencies in our JIT repository. So, we have added the pods library to the uh, JIT ignore file. As you can see, the last line here shows that we don't want to store pods in repository. But, uh, what uh, uh, here I have shown the main points of ignoring the pod repository and the cons uh, of ignoring the pod directory. I mean directory. The uh, the main point for ignoring it is that uh, repository will uh, become smaller. Uh, it uh, takes up less space and there won't be any conflicts uh, be during the merging of uh, several branches or uh, during the rebasing or something like that. So uh, each developer just uh, uh, switches branches uh, and uh, uh, updates uh, pods by his own. So. Uh, we haven't faced any problems during the development of our project using this approach, but it was very um, easy for us to switch between branches to, I don't know, um, revert some changes and so on. But actually, there are a cons of ignoring a positive directory, and the main cons are that after cloning the uh, repositories, the project can't be immediately built and run. You still need to fetch all your dependencies. You need to have Cocoa pods installed on the machine, which is um, a build machine. 
And actually, it's obvious that internet connection is necessary for building of your project. But our uh, CI um, uh, tool is always connected to the internet. It, it, it always has pods installed. So it were not a problem to set, set it up that each time before building our project, it fetches the Cocoa Pods dependencies and builds it. So it was very easy and straightforward to set this, uh, set this up. So uh, here I have listed all useful links, which I um, think can be uh, useful. And uh, all the discussions which are listed here needs to be known. And uh, if you have any questions, you are freely to ask them now. Is anyone here? <laughs> Yes. Yep, we all are here. <laughs> so as I understand, no question. Guys, do you have questions to Vladislav? Wake up. Okay, let's uh, thank you uh, very much for your speech. Uh, if guys have uh, questions.